to be featured on Rocket Dreamers is a 19-year-old German player named Quint. And what started out as a the usual conversation around his journey in Rocket League and his ambitions within the game turned into a very important conversation of the struggle to get to the very top of this game professionally. Sub-Saharan Africa is a developing region, and as such, we have a far smaller player base, which means the chances of making it into a regional RLCS is far higher. In EU, there are hundreds of players all competing for very few spots at the top of the game. My takeaway from this conversation has been the realization that being really, really good at Rocket League is not enough. There are many factors outside of being very good at the game that have to be mastered in order to just have a chance of making it at the top. Most young players are completely unaware of these factors, and it can be a sober experience discovering them in the journey. This was a much longer conversation than usual, but I think a very important one. Here's Quint. All right. So, Quint, I, I, I feel like I need to give a bit of context to this conversation because you were actually the very first person I spoke to that I interviewed for the series for Rocket Dreamers. But at the time, I had a very different idea of how it would look. So we we had this long conversation and then the way I wanted to do it wasn't going to work with how we did it. So we organized another one and then uh, you were going through a bit of a rough patch. So it like wasn't a good time to talk. So there's been a number of attempts for you and I to have a proper conversation. Um, and, and I'm hoping that the timing is excellent for you and excellent for me. But in a way, I'm kind of glad it went the way it did because in the meantime, I've spoken to a lot of South African pro, semi-pro Rocket League players. And the scene in South Africa is very different. So all the guys I've spoken to are currently playing RLCS splits for the Sub-Saharan Africa region. And that's made me think about you and our conversation because you are an EU player with a completely different scene. You aren't with an RLCS team. You're sort of on, on the bubble, maybe below the bubble, in and around someone who's been in a very different scene. And I think it will contrast very nicely with what goes on here because the Rocket League community is quite small in South Africa. And in Europe, it's huge. So there we go. There's the context. So first of all, first of all, Quint, hello. Thanks for being here. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> hello. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Okay, good. And um, so I, I want to talk briefly about, so we're going to do how I think we're going to do this. I want to talk about you for a little bit. Then I want to talk about the EU Rocket League scene, and then I want to talk a little bit more in depth about you in particular. So, so just some basic information: Who are you? Where are you from? How 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 do you land up being involved with this ridiculous game of Rocket League? All right. So, um, I am Quint. I am from Berlin, Germany, and uh, I have been playing Rocket League for. Five years now, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. I started playing um, because one of my friends recommended the game, and um, little did I know I actually played the like the alpha alpha. I played Sarp, wow. but I didn't know that that was the game to mm. like the game that was building up to be Rocket League. I, I only played a bit of Sarp. I was in a full on Minecraft uh, um, mindset uh, in that time, but I. I tried it out like I don't know a couple of times and uh, it was quite fun but I always <laughs> liked Minecraft more. <laughs> okay. And then okay so so how long would you say you've been playing Rocket League seriously like as in a in a focused way and 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 looking to be involved with Rocket League competitively? Um I started seeing Rocket League as a potential um like future for me. Uh, like a, a thing that I could can put time and like work into and try and be the best. It's mm -hmm. actually it goes way way back. I, it was when I saw the season three RLCS finals. That's when I first thought, damn, that would be nice. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, yeah, um, 
back then I was I think I was diamond, so I knew I had to I had to grind and uh, actually get good, and I had and huge huge trouble with that. <laughs> no, fair enough. As 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 many do. I'm I'm trying to think when that was. Season three puts us where about 2017. Should be end of 2017 or like end of 2017. Fall, okay. fall 2017. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well then, uh, so that's and uh, so how old are you now? I'm I just turned 19. Okay, so you're 19 years old from Berlin in Germany uh in and around the competitive scene. So that's enough for now. We're going to cycle back and get a lot more information about you. But I'm interested to know from you what I I don't know if we call it the bubble scene, the competitive scene. How hard is it to get to break into sort of the RLCS level competitive scene in EU? Oh God, that's a really good question. Um, it is like, first of all, it's immensely hard. It's, it's probably the most difficult region I'd say. Um, I can't really say anything about NA because like, that's the closest contender to that title, but I am so sure that EU's got so many more like talented players at the bottom like there's so much i think there's so much more potential because um the amount of teams that can upset rlcs teams the amount of bubble teams that can upset rlcs teams on a regular in europe is insane it's mm. uh it's it's incredible like you you have uh the, the bubble scene that is huge there are so many new people there's um like I, every every two weeks I see a player getting B plus rank A, which is kind of like entering bubble scene level, like bubble scene level, or like entering that. Well, it, it, yeah, it is. It is like a bubble. It works like a bubble. Sometimes someone pops out and then you, someone comes in and then everyone tries up with everyone and, uh, um, but it's it, it's crazy. It's crazy. And we're talking about uh I don't know, we're talking about two three no. We're talking about three, four hundred players that that are like cycling around, trying out with each other, and mm. just waiting to form a new powerhouse team. And, and uh, it's it's so difficult to find these like these players that are willing to put the same time and effort into the game as you want to, because some people play better when they play less, some play better when they play more. It's it's just uh, it's just weird it's 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 like finding your soulmate but you have to find <laughs> two so uh, okay it's like even worse so is there i mean the way you're describing it i mean I, you would think there's there's a clear path to follow if it's like okay i want to i want to have an rlcs team in order to do that i need to go and play here i need to beat these guys i need uh, in my mind, it, it, it seems like there should be a logical path to follow, and you're either good enough to follow that path or not. But the little bit you've described, it seems like a, a, a little bit more chaotic. So, A, you've got to find people you gel with, but then let's say you do that. How do you get the attention of anybody who's going to help you get into the RLCS? Um, first of all, like finding a team and finding people that like have the same vibe as you uh, is very difficult because there is a lot of egoing going mm. on like so many people just like they they face you once in ranked and maybe you have a bed there or something you're gone like they're not considering you for the next two years you mm. can win an uh, attorney a weekly whatever they'll still say you're shit mm. that's that's the most important thing there's so many assholes in the community that are constantly putting down other players um, because it's essentially it's like gatekeeping the scene um, and just working with your like with your closest so that's why you can mostly see like friends like friend groups from good players reaching like better results faster than anyone else because mm. if you join a friend group for example, with uh, in Germany, we have a friend group around like Tox, uh, Catalysm, like Evil Geniuses, mm -hmm. and then Tox from Luminosity. They're all one friend group, and they're like worse 
players than them, of course, that always hang out with the with the better ones. And mm. then eventually they play tourneys with them because they're friends, some like some weeklies. But then these worse players, they improve much faster because they have like more they have more chances to like work uh, to play against better players, play with better players. So it's it's kind of also like you got to pick your friend group, right? Um, yes. And uh, no, but it's 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 definitely not a path you go like one path. There are multiple ways of like entering the the bubble scene or the top. I don't know. Let's say because saying top forty eight RLCS is a really good achievement. Like being top forty eight in the EU is you. Uh, know are you talking? Are you talking works. as a team or as a player? Like top forty eight as no, a no, team? No. I'm I'm talking I'm talking as a team. Okay, am, got you. That makes sense. Yeah. And I'd, I'd comf- comfortably say that, uh, like, a top 48, top 64 team in EU is probably, like, around the same level as, uh, like, the current South African regional champion teams. Okay. Um, like, not to be rude or anything, but the region's not developed, so it's, like, not their fault in, in any way. But it's, so- it's, it's comf- I think, uh, the same level. And how and how how is that ranking done? I mean, how do you become team sixty? Is is, is there some sort of system that determines that? Um, no, it's based on um, it's based on RLCS results. Like if you say okay. uh, you made, for example, like in the new format, day two, I think is a top thirty two teams. I think top thirty two okay. teams in EU make it, and. Um, yeah, t- t- yeah, I think it's sub thirty two, okay. and uh, that's day two. So if you if you make day two, then it's like a certain achievement you can like, for example, put on your Twitter bio or something like that. Mm-hmm. But you can use that to find yes. better place to enter the scene. And that's how us like some people make it into the scene. Like as a pickup team, you you play RCS, you go far, then you split and you find new teams, and then that's how uh, that's how it works. It's, so it, it's chaos. It's pure chaos. It sounds like that. So, so it's so it's quite possible that there's a there's a bunch of monkey moons and extras, and uh, apparently jacks who are out there that are just not discovered, that no one knows about, or that aren't haven't connected with the right people to be seen by the right people or played with the right people to be identified. Would you agree with that? Um, in some way, yes, of course. Mm-hmm. I think there are so many uh, undeveloped talents in the scene. Um, but also I think that, um, if you play ranked and you work on, like, you work on getting a name in the leaderboards, that works. Like, okay. you'll get discovered for some, someday you'll get discovered. Okay. But you have to be at the top, top. So for like a, a talented player with not really any backing to make top five in ones and then be discovered is quite, it's mm. quite the task. And mm. You have to you have to think about it. There is no financial backing as well. So yes. the only players that like are actually able to reach these goals are either the ones that are young and have to and have time after school and are financially backed from their parents or it's the people that work. And and the people that work mostly are a bit older so they're not really like a a, a new but, talent like yes. It's, okay, uh, well, that, well, let me ask you this, Quint. You are a, a few weeks ago, and I don't know if you saw this on Twitter. There was a there was quite a big conversation going on about the bubble scene um, and what can be done to improve it. I don't know if you saw or saw any of those conversations. I th- I read through s- like a tweet longer, I think. Yes, one, but yes. it's it's. I didn't really like read uh, full conversation. Okay, well, and it doesn't really matter. But there was clearly there. There's a, a lot of frustration and anxiety around the bubble scene, and that something should be done about it. From your point of view, what would improve the bubble scene for for the EU region? Um, I mean, I like the concept of academy teams. Um, okay, but th- but then again, it's completely useless because RCS doesn't allow academy teams like if there's a team singularity at 
Team Singularity Academy team cannot participate on our CS. That, and yes. That's a fact. It's in rules. Um, I say Team Singularity because today they've actually announced that they're like a, opening up a... Like a, it's a kind of training program where you say, okay, I'm interested, and then they'll pick maybe tryouts from there. It's 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 kind of cool actually. Okay. Um, and um, I think personally, bubble scene they should. It's it's so like dull, but they should just pump more money into it. Like I, it's um, <clears throat> the financial backing behind, for example, the um, the WCBC from uh, Psyonix was like highly disputed i think that's like i think that's good uh um wcbc is a is a great thing that happened um and as and you see so many um female players like mm. develop their potential um but i saw today actually that there was a fifteen thousand women's championship going on that's fifteen thousand dollars that are not invested into the bubble scene which makes me kind of skeptical because that is exactly the money the bubble scene needs to grow, and okay. if the, and if the bubble scene grows, more teams are gonna push the game. Like, mm. like Psyonix, of course, Psyonix probably they 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 must have noticed that the like the lower levels um, on on Rocket League are like they have massive potential to be like of use when it comes to. Um, uh, monetization and everything yes. like that because even like lower leagues they have up to like a thousand viewers in a di in a division one like the national leagues and everything like that mm. if Sonics would be actively backing those leagues and uh, just supporting that i think the scene would explode mm. in in revenue and in skill so i think that would be the best thing uh, to happen to the bubble scene is basically just more money Okay. Which sounds kind of bad, but it is, it is, <laughs> I think, the way to go. <laughs> money is money is money. Um, okay, so let's now cycle back to you, Quint. So where where do you stand now in terms of, of of where are you in the bubble scene? Where do you think you're likely to go? What are your what are your plans and ambitions? What's uh, what's realistic for you? Uh, what's ambitious for you? Give us that story. Well, right now, I'd say I'm probably at the lowest point you can be in the like bubble scene. I am okay. a, a, I'm a, um, I'm a player that I, I that struggles with consistency, mm -hmm. and that's probably the first thing you have to develop to enter that level. Okay. I can play insanely good in one day and then completely shit the bed on the second day. It's 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 just it doesn't make sense to me. But well, that's like kind of in the past. I've seen in the last few months, I've seen it going up again. So I'm like, I'm, I'm hoping that it's that I've, I'm, I'm gonna um, like, I'm gonna um, go past this plateau yes. of of skill. And um, but but I'm generally also like because because I'm a very weird player. Like spontaneous tryouts and just like one scrim or something. Like we were playing one turn and then see how it goes. Will probably not work with me because I have a really weird play style. Okay. And that's why I I was or I am overlooked quite a lot as a potential okay. player. Um. And it's 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 been the past two years that I haven't really been able to find a team I can really work with. Um. Because as like good or as bad as I am, I need players that work around around me as well as as well as i do around them so it, it, it is kind of hard to find because maybe you'll find someone with the right mindset but they're potentially worse or better and it's just it, it, it's it's hard to say and then there's not many people that i know that put the same amount of time and uh, effort into the game as okay me. so all right so with that in mind, what would you say your priorities are for 2022 when it comes to Rocket League? Um, I probably do, have to... Well, let me ask it another way. Where do you, where would you like to be at the end of 22? Um, at the end of 2022, I want to have a a team that can a team that can work with me. At, 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 well, 
it's, it's a it's a bad phrasing. Let me let me rephrase mm -hmm. that. Uh, a team that can um, outperform expectations and potentially enter ROCS level. I okay. want to. I, I definitely. I'm, I'm, I definitely want to enter ROCS main event type level in the next season. Not this season because I don't think I can improve that fast. Okay. But I think next season would be my best shot at it. All right. So, uh, okay. I, I mean, this it's a fascinating thing you're highlighting because not only do you need to keep yourself improving um, and keep yourself at a, at a very high level, but there's there are things you you wouldn't think would be part of the game, like finding finding people you can gel with, that you have synergy with, that uh, that you can build a team with. I, I mean, that's it's interesting that that's proving to be a difficult thing rather than just in-game improvement. No, it's 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 way worse. Um, like improving in game, you can you can be an incredible player and uh, have just no mentality like really bad mentality and you're you're not gonna get picked up it's uh there are some like decent players that are uh, have struggled to be um picked up by a team just because of their mentality like then they can actually top the leaderboards and be one of the greatest like players right now in the game and they'll still struggle to find a find a decent team and uh i think that's uh like personality and mentality is such a big deal. Many people forget mm -hmm. that, and uh, and then also what I mentioned the the, the contacts and um, yeah potentially also your your um, how how well you're known in the in the whole scene mm. like and and for what you're known it's. Uh, Okay. It's, it's, it's so many different factors. It's, it's quite confusing, but uh, it is the way it is. No, I, I, I think you're doing a good job of describing the fact that it is confusing, that, 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 it, that it's an, there's not a clear path. There isn't a definite route that you follow. You kind of have to be good at multiple things. You probably have to get lucky somewhere along the line. You know, you, you, you happen to be in the right VC chat one day as someone's looking. You know, there are, there are those as well where you kind of – get lucky at it you have a goal and i'm like many many people want to play in rlcs a lot more will not make it than who do and and that's the the natural order of things in any professional sport there's only so much room at the top there is there a way for people in in eu to kind of make you know obviously not make a huge living but that can get by who aren't at that level like is there enough going on in terms of competitions and other things outside of RLCS where, where someone like you, while you're grinding to try and break it into the top league, can actually finance yourself? There's absolutely no way that's going to happen uh, Like in the next year. There's just too, uh, too little support in the lower leagues. Um, you have uh, the the biggest league in Europe, and the price pools are at like I don't know. Uh, for 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 a season that goes multiple months, you have a two thousand price pool for like six mm. teams that make it into playoffs. So it's like it's basically nothing. Yes. And but there's there are many orgs that are like actively supporting players, but then again, it's nothing you can live off at yes. all. And. Um, that's the that's the bad thing so the probably the most realistic thing for us players in EU like the most realistic thing to do is actually to move regions which is kind of like I don't support that like that decision but I think it's like it's like a valid thing if you say hey I want to I want to make a major I want to I want to earn big and I can't do it in Europe because it's so stacked then I might as well move regions and play um, Asia Pacific North, something like that, because you, I'm one. You'd, of, yeah, you'd have to then physically move to another country. That's what yeah. you. That, wow, that's. And uh, have you known of people who are who are trying to do that? Um, I have. <laughs> well, there's some people that definitely said they're they're probably gonna do it. Wow. Um, okay. So it's and, something people uh, are talking about. If, if even if, if it hasn't happened yet, there's discussion around it. 
One hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, wow. uh, in Asia, there's like I think it's called Hilltop Picnic or something. The the, the team, which yeah. is Doomsy. Okay. I think wow. Doomsy plays. And uh, Doomsy is from America. He moved to Japan like I don't know <clears throat> a few years ago. Wow. And he's even though he he stopped playing competitively quite early, and he's like I don't, I guess uh, barely SSL or something like that. Um, he's like top four in. Um, he's like top four in Asia Pacific wow. North or something like that. It's it's actually surreal. And it okay. just shows that the that the region is so underdeveloped that the European players are actually considering moving. And interesting. It's, yeah. Um. Actually, actually, I have a, I have a good um. I have a good example. Uh. An X U player. He's he was called Frosty. Now he's called Nicholas. He's actually quite a big streamer. Okay. Um. He was born in. Oh my God. I'm. I. I, I don't know. I think it's. Was it Abu Dhabi? I don't know. Middle Eastern. He was born yes. there, but then he moved to Slovakia, Germany. I don't know. He, uh, I don't know his whole story. Yes. But he was essentially, I'd say, my level. Okay. <clears throat> like, we've always improved together. I used to scrim him so much. Like, almost every single day, we were scrim partners when we both had, like, our teams. And he actually made main event in Middle East, I think this last Amazing. regional okay because so obviously then he moved to somewhere in the middle east to in order to pursue that he went he went no he went i think he didn't do, uh, do it to pursue um like the rlcs career but he actually moved back because he moved back to where oh, his okay parents okay or okay it, it didn't have to do anything with rocket league yes. but then he did play that for fun and apparently <laughs> he did amazing okay I, I guess he's improved as well. Like I, I I want to believe he's he's improved and improved again, because I can't like stand the thought that there is like RLCS main event um, on my level. Like I could yes. just potentially move houses and be an RLCS player. <laughs> like it's 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 something it's something that doesn't go out of your head. That's why yes. people have considered it, of course, and I am considering it as well. Where would you go, and or I mean, do you have um, to? I, I, I'm not sure what the rules are around just moving, moving somewhere else and playing in that region. If you're allowed to do that, or how that, I, I'm not sure if there are rules around that. Uh, it's the it's the country you uh, reside in, okay. so you have to be a resident there. And okay. if I were like to, if I were to move to, I don't know, Indonesia. Okay. I could play RLCS there um, by the rules that are right now. I, maybe they're going to work like around those. But, okay. I mean, Turbo Pulse are moved from That's UK and A without That's problems. Um, Complexity moved from South uh, South America to NA. So, yes. I, like, it's, it's possible, 100%. And ju let's just take, I don't know, for example, like, what's a... What's a for example, Navi mm -hmm. in EU. They're top... Uh, top 16 team, I think they did. They did make main event yet uh, now, uh, less regional, yeah. and they dominate Asia Pacific North, Asia Pacific South. They'd probably be like second in in, uh, in Middle East because of Sandrock, of course. They'd top uh, South Africa, and uh, like a top 16 team could easily do that. Okay, and then gotcha. if a uh, if, if a top 32 team would move there, they probably do the same mm. right now. The scene is like growing and it's growing fast, and like I love that. I love I, I loved seeing worlds, uh, like, well worlds, the major yeah. with like yeah. the different nations. I love that. That was that was so fun. Um, but uh, yeah, right now it's just uh, <laughs> it's just weird to know that like to to know that you could be an RCS player. Mm. All right. So okay. So so you're. For the last couple of years, you've uh, would be someone I would describe as a rocket dreamer. So you know, a good rocket league player looking to be to, uh, aspiring to greater things, and 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 kind of, uh, I mean, in truth, struggling in the in the hurly burly and the craziness of so many players 
um, a very small scene at the top, not a, not a lot of support outside of the top. So, so where does that leave you in terms of, of, of what, what your life is going to look like over the next couple of years? You know, how long do you pursue this and then maybe move to something else? Or, or where are your thoughts going along those lines? Uh, yeah, it's something you don't want to think about, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. I'm 19 years old and I probably consider myself as too old to make it. Like, okay. of course, there's, um, there's always a way, but like nine, being 19 and at my level is like, it's, it's, it's kind of like a death sentence for your career. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to dodge that. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> because I think I, I just need that little push and okay. uh, currently I'm work I'm working on it and I think I've, I've done pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, lately but it's it is so like how do, how do I phrase it it's it's incredibly demotivating and motivating yes. as well it's, okay it's so it's just a combination of those okay well if we break it down into smaller chunks then there's are you are you focused on Rocket League for 2022 to go as far as you possibly go and and then Reevaluate depending on how things pan out this year. Would that be an accurate description of where you are now? Yes, that that that's pretty that's pretty spot on. Um, I am gonna. <laughs> I've I've already done in, in in January like a kind of uh, like training schedule. I've already experimented with like uh, experimented with a training plan schedule in uh, 2021. It didn't okay. really work out as well. Uh, okay. because, but that was because of me that is because I can't uh, like really motivate myself if I'm isolated from everyone because like of COVID of course and uh, like a, a special a special case like in my family that I re really cannot see anyone that's kind of a bit uh, uh, it's, it's really sad Okay. Um, but I, I said to myself 2022 is I'm, I'm not gonna let that happen again Okay, and uh, it, it's it's going well. I've actually set up um, because it was my birthday. Few, uh, if, oh my god, that was already more than a week ago. Um, I set what up date? Uh, what date? Uh, the fourteenth of January. That was my birthday. Oh, okay. Okay. And, I ask uh, only because I was on the sixth. So we were quite close there. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and I've uh, set up a tournament PC in my room. So I am okay. now gonna. Well, I have <coughs> separated like my free time and Rocket League. Okay. And it, it's it's here in the background. You can see the monitor arm here. Okay. Um, and uh, that's that is my way to professionalism. Okay. And uh, that is probably one of the. It's it's my it's probably my last push. Like, uh, okay. I am giving myself the, the opportunity to actually make it big. Excellent. Well, what I've really appreciated from you, Quint, um, in, in the various conversations we've had and this one is, is I think it gives uh, so many people have uh, this, this desire, like, man, I'd love to make it in professional gaming and I think many many people get into it without understanding what's actually what's actually involved and how it works and and so I've, I've appreciated your you've been very candid and open about the struggle of doing it and and it's not enough just to have a, a passion and a desire because there are there are factors beyond just the game um, I mean, you, you've, you've got a, firstly, you've got the rest of your life. You might be at school. You might, so there's challenge, life challenges outside Rocket League. But then within the game, it's not just about being good. You've got to find the right people, make the right connections. You've got to be the sort of person that can actually form relationships with other people. Because if you're completely antisocial, forget about it. No one wants to play with you, even if you're good. As, and, you, and you've mentioned that. And I think it gives... A, a really good picture of what's involved and it's and if you pick any other career path that's challenging you know if you want to be even if you want to be a doctor you know there's there's hard grind work it's not we're not living in this fantasy world of oh you can play video games for a living
was was that a question? <laughs> <laughs> I, do you know what? It, it wasn't. It, but I but I kind of stopped because I was talking on and on for ages and went. Uh, maybe you want to say something? <laughs> no, I was, I, I was, no, I was listening. That was, no, it was interesting. I, I don't want to know where, you, where you're going on that point. No, I, I, I just think it's, you know, I'm, I, I'm very interested. I, I, I love this game and and the opportunity it presents to people, <laughs> but and, and I want to, I guess, uh, highlight what the what the possibilities are, but also for people to understand the challenges of it. I mean, because there are kids who are 12, 13, 14 years old who are going, man, I'm going to go, I'm going to go and do RLCS, um, but may not understand the path and the journey and what that involves. I mean, in addition to 10 hours a day of grinding the actual game, there's doing all the things outside of that that you have to do, right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's probably the main reason why uh, upcoming players, some upcoming players, have like not reached the top yet, because mm. many people underestimate the amount of work that that you have to put in the game. Because well, you can you can be ex extremely talented and just be as good as the top, but then the sport the, the sport is evolving and the skill is evolving, so someday you'll you'll have to put in work. And uh, it's not just uh, it's not just like oh man, I'm bad at dribbling. I'm gonna practice dribbling now. It's it's, mm. it's way beyond that. It's someday you'll have to um, like learn how to finance all of your like your career. You can um, well at least in Germany um, about like taxes and everything. And uh, it's 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 such a huge thing. You have to you have to learn and mm. uh for young players like that's probably like these years when you're of, of like a young age and you're like a i don't know a prodigy or something it's it's probably the best years you can have mm. because when it, when you get older you also you're you also get more mature and mm. as like <laughs> as good as a video game career can be someday you'll eventually reflect on the competition and say all right this is too much pressure or this is like this is so much pressure i don't know if i can handle it i could do a less stressful job and just i don't know study to be an electrician or something like <laughs> it's yeah. it's something when you mature that your brain just starts switching off the competitiveness mm. um and it it already it already started with me. I'm yes. not even gonna lie. It already started with me. I am extremely motivated because I see how much my friends and my family support me, yes. and I still want to reach that goal. But it's not the same as it was when I started and discovered the game. Um, yes. Back then, I was ready to give up anything to make it in this game, and right now I am sitting here. I a year ago I said I don't I don't want to work, um, if I like uh, if I don't have to work like in another place um, to earn money, I like I I won't do it because I want to focus on Rocket League. Mm. And right now, I've I've been working for like three three four months now. Okay. And uh, like it's. It's that it's that decision making. It's when you get more mature. It's yeah. uh, more factors come in, and uh, there's so much more stuff happening, uh, which is what the players that are right now, like upcoming players, motivated young players that have to put in their head that it's not gonna be the same. Like mentality wise, it's it's it will change. Your mentality will change, and it uh, it's probably one of the hardest. Uh, mental battles you're gonna fight i i i think this i i think what you've said quint is incredibly important um and 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 in many ways this conversation has gone a bit of a different direction than i thought but i also think it is has been i think it's really really important and i and and you have described incredibly well the position where you find yourself absolutely this desire and you're giving it 2022 you're going to go out there find the team 
and develop it as much as it can, see where it goes, but also have arrived at the understanding that um, there is life beyond this. There has to be life beyond this. Even if, uh, you know, even if you're 15 and make it to the very, very top, you're at the very top for two years, it, it is going to come to an end. There, there is going to be life outside this game. Yeah. And, and it's uh, and it's and it's worth and it's worth thinking about now, even when it's when it's when you're all about the game, it's all just like, okay, there is life beyond this, and I need to at least have a little bit of a thought about that. Yeah, it's it's incredibly important. Um it's the same with uh like balancing or like it's it's the same thought you were you're gonna have like when it's about balancing uh, esport and like physical sport because your your physical uh, health is such an important factor in the game that um, you have to s someday you realize oh god I didn't like do any I didn't work out for uh, quite a while and it's actually like showing in my performance mm. and everything like that and I see myself. Um, actually going to sleep early because I know for a fact that if I go to sleep later and wake up later I am actually actually gonna play so bad that I'm gonna hate myself for it so it's like <laughs> it's like so many it's it's like so many new decisions you're gonna make just because you're older yes. and just because you're taking you're taking that path of like maturing and realizing and actually learning about the game and the game's faces the different faces um it's it, it's a, it's a wonderful experience it is work experience as at, at its finest but uh, the young players that are like 14 15 they still have to learn everything about that mm. and uh yeah i don't know this this actually took a uh this conversation took a turn i, I didn't think <laughs> it would. Uh, but uh i mean i guess it's it, somebody has to say it <laughs> I, no no I, I I've appreciated it very much because I uh, as I said at the beginning you were the very first person I spoke to when I was when I wanted to wanted to do this series um, and I and I think I had a, a a lot my view of all of this was a lot more romantic than it is now having spoken to a few people, um, the ones that I've interviewed and posted, there's others that I've interviewed and haven't posted yet, and I've also had conversations with people in the background. And then it's culminated now with this conversation with you, and it's just, it's given it a very necessary dose of reality, is absolutely, chase your dream, be motivated to chase your dream, but there is a reality here. And, and, and if you understand that, prepare for it and, and, and build it into your drive forward, you're probably going to enjoy the experience more because I, I think we can be so wound up in, in the drive to attain the goal that we're hating the experience of just trying to get. That's it wasn't very, a question, well but said. I just ended. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that was very well said. That was very, very well said. I totally agree on that. All right, great. Well, listen, I, 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 I think we, I think we've covered a bit here. So, if you were to, to, to try and tie this conversation up in terms of yourself and and your future, how would you do that? And 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 I know it's, it's a very badly worded question, but how would you bring this to a close? Um, I, I probably say, um. I'm going to chase my dream. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work my ass off to chase my dream. Um, but I am human and failure is something everyone's going to experience. So it's not always going to be a high, but uh, I'm going to get through the lows and I'll hopefully make it one day to achieve my dream, even if it is for, I don't know, a short time. But uh, I've, I've, dreamed about playing competitively for so long and uh, just taking this all in the whole bubble scene experience the whole competitiveness the, the scrims the tourneys everything it's been until now it's been such a pleasure and i can't wait for it to go on like minimum another year okay great 
Well, fantastic. And, and, uh, and, and from me, thank you. Thank you for having this conversation. It, it, it's given me lots to think about. And, and I hope those who get to listen to it and see it uh, will take what they need from it in, their, in, in pursuit of their own journey. So, Quint, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure.